Well, I've got a multi-page PDF file that I want to clean up. So I figured I might as well clean this thing up on a video. Uh, maybe somebody will watch how I'm cleaning up here and it can be to some use. Uh, this, is a, this was a PDF paper I made up some time ago. And uh, it's composed of several different sheets here. And I'm going to import them all in uh, because I want to make some stamps from a few. Uh, there's some decorative looking things. As a matter of fact, one of the decorations my daughter made. And I wanted to uh, see if I could make a stamp from that uh, decoration that she had made. And what this is doing right now is it's importing this multi-page PDF and it's doing it in eight and a half by 11 at 300 dpi so they're all a pretty good size this is actually a, a printable sheet of um, 51 different 51 different sheets inside of here and of course because you see layers you only see the first layer on top as i turn this layer off you'll see that there's other layers underneath it and these were made into a uh, these were specifically made to be able to use in a uh, in a uh, what do you want to call them a um, a log book a little uh, art log or art book and every sheet is made up to have a little spot to write in or do something in an art journal, that's what I want to say. I'm getting spacey here. Well, these are actually pretty neat. These are eight and a half by 11 sheets that will print out like this. I mean, they'll look like this when they print out. And again, this is all to be done in a, as, as a page in an art journal. But I wanted to get some paint brushes from here, especially from this top one. I'm going to make all these visible, not that it really matters. This top one right here has got a design along the edge, and that black design my daughter made. And I wanted to take that and turn that into a paintbrush. So if I first thing you do, like always, is you duplicate that layer. Then I'll take that layer and I will desaturate it. desaturate okay so now it's desaturated I take my colors and try to adjust my curves I want to get black black and white white or reasonably close to that so that I can uh, capture that black border on there so what you're going to see, actually, is how to separate a black edge from a drawing. This is the black edge I want out. And if you notice, the top of this curve, this top part here, what that does is it makes everything lighter. This side makes it all darker. So what I'm winding up with is a near black and white drawing. the nearer I can get these together, the closer it'll get. And because it's so large, it is taking a minute to do it. And we'll tell it OK. Now that's pretty good. That's pretty good. But I've still got some other color in there. What I'm, I'm going to do, though, is uh, cut out the lettering. Get all the lettering in here. And then I'll take what remains and I'll copy it and put it in another image. Get it totally out of this group of, of pictures here. Um, select none. And here I want to copy this. And so I'll be selecting all. Edit copy paste as a new image now I want to pull out just the black now this is quite large again this is eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper what I want is to use this as a 
as a paintbrush on my computer graphics. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try to keep this as a paintbrush I could use on uh, making um, printable sheets, so I can reduce this size. Let me take that image and scale the image. None, almost nothing will be higher than 720. So I can take 720 for the height and let it auto adjust because that's together. It auto adjusts the top and it scales it all down. Now that one there is scaled at, if you look up here, 556 width to 720 height. And I can pick it back up here. Push it down the space and I can move it around. Push it down the space bar. And see if I can adjust these colors a little bit more now. Do the curves. Get some more white. White out. You can see I see a little bit of dark in there. See if I can get rid of that and get that black blacker. That looks pretty good. Okay. Now I'm going to take and double that. And then the top one, I'm going to make the white into an alpha layer. That means make the white invisible. Now you can't tell that until I turn this off. And there you see, there's the white with the white taken out and it leaves me just the black. And I'm going to double that and merge it down. Now let's see if that's good enough that I get only the black and nothing more. It may or may not be. I might have to clean it again, put it against the white or something. There, if I select the background and I invert it, selection invert, and let me zoom up in there and see what it looks like. It does look like I got only the, only the lines. There's a little bit around, but that needs to be col colored anyway, so it's a black and. Uh, and transparent. So we're going to put one more layer on top of that. Okay. And I'm going to paint it black so that all that little edges, if you see the little, well, you'll see when I click it, the little places that are, uh, have a little bit of black in will all turn black now. There it is. Now if I take that and merge it down, that, to me, looks like it can make a good paintbrush. We'll give it a shot. Let me back, back it off again. Now, remember I had mentioned before that if I take and copy this, before I make a paintbrush, I can just say, OK, select, I mean, edit, copy. Now I've got a temporary paintbrush to try. So let me open up a brand new drawing, new. Um, let me do a 12. 80 by 720. Reduce that size just a bit so it'll fit in the window. And I'm going to try my paintbrush on it. Let me take that and uh, put a background. You know, I could get a background here. I probably could get a background right here somewhere. I'm going to try that background right there. Even though I'm not I, not visible up on top or nothing, because I've chosen this, I can take, and it's already selected. Say edit, copy, and I think this will work. Edit, paste as a new image, and there it is. Now I want to rotate it. Image, transform, flip 90 degrees uh, counterclockwise and it's still quite large so I can go 720 on the height image scale the image to a height of 720 and then I can copy it and that's really much larger than it looks if you look at it, it's 720. It's not 1280 like I, sh like I, it's not 1280 like I want, because I, I think I can uh, stretch it and it'll look okay. Oop. Again, so you go edit copy. And paste as a new layer. 
and I can drag it out and I think it'll still look fine. It is marble paper, so if it's a little bit stretched, it looks like it was made that way. Scale it. And make that to the image size. Let's move it down. Now we'll go back and try our brush out. Okay, I'm going to dry my brush. Oh, I did do a copy since then, so i got to do another copy. Edit. Copy. And let's do a brush. That looks my clipboard brush. That looks like it to me. And we'll go back here and try our brush out. And I didn't do it as a grayscale, so I can only print a black. And there's the brush. All right. Except I did it in the same layer. I don't want to do it on the same layer. Let me go up here and put another layer. And I'll show you why. And let's do two just to be sure it's nice and the color merge down. Now I can go to the top and I can choose areas in here. I want no threshold. And I want to choose some areas in that layer right there. I'm going to call that so I can see it. Okay, that's the, uh, the brush. That's the brush. And that layer there has nothing on it. But that's going to be the painted layer. That will be the painted layer. So let's go back up this brush one. Pick some areas out in there. We'll go... Let me pick out every other area, I guess. I'll try that one. That one. That one. That one. There. 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 And there. And I want to increase the size by one pixel because I want to paint them on this layer right here. I want to paint them. But when I paint them, I want them to be one pixel bigger than the black outline. So there's no little fuzzy edges in there. So let me go select, grow by one pixel, and find the color to paint it. Would be a good color to paint. Uh, a good way to base my color would be to go to this drawing here, pick a color. Right there is a pick a color. Pick a color and then darken it a little bit or make it a little bit different. But it's basically the color is based off of the background so that it will match and look good. Now here's the painted layer and I can go in that painted layer and say, okay, paint every place is selected. And there it is. And if I go and, and zoom up on this, if I take and zoom right up in on it, and it's still got a little bit of a line. Why does that all have a line on it? A white. I can get rid of that real easy. I'm not sure why it has a white line in it. But we'll fix that. I did something to include a white border on it. Okay, there we go. And it's right up to the edges. I'm not sure why I selected that black uh, white border. 
I might not, I might not, I shouldn't have merged it down, I don't think back is done. Okay, so anyway, it looks almost, there's a little spot right there. See, I get too picky. That tiny little spot bothered me just a little bit. See right there where it's broken? It's not solid. So if I go here to this, and I've got a black color, uh, pick a brush, and I can't even use a brush, that's right, I've got to use a pencil. If it's one pixel, it's got to be a, it's got to be a, and there it is, see, there. I wonder if there's any more. See, we could straighten it up to the very pixel on it. Okay, that looks good, that looks good. Huh. Okay, merge down. Okay, good. I want to put one layer with a white pixel in it, and I'm not sure why, but I don't really care about things when I can fix them so easily. It's when I do something I can't fix. So there's my my uh, outline again. That I use like coloring with a crayon. And let me pick out some more areas to color. And I will pick out these here. There's one, there's one there. And I will take these all, expand them by one, grow by one. Then I go down here and I can paint all of them. And again, we'll go, I'll try to base the color something on the background. Maybe something towards that yellow shade would be nice. I'll take that, pick a yellow. And we'll take that yellow and we'll darken it a little bit. And we'll go on our painted layer and see if we can't paint it there. Okay. Now these are supposed to be flowers up on top. So we go back up here and we'll pick our flowers out. And the flowers will be white. We already know they'll be white. And let's pick them out. There's one area, two, three, four, five. There, 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 there. Okay. And we'll take those and expand them by one. Select grow by one. And then go underneath it and we'll paint them white. They're all painted white. Now let's back off from this whole thing. There we go. Nice little drawing. Nice little drawing. And I've got my... And I know that that's a good functioning paintbrush. So now it's time to turn it into a paintbrush. A permanent paintbrush. Not a temporary one. A permanent one. paint on my lines. No, there, that's all of them. That's all that. I want to select all my background. Let me do another layer from everything. So I, uh, I knew from visible, merge it down. I'll select all the background, select invert, copy it, paste it as a new image, paste as a new image. I know I've got a good paintbrush, so it's good to make into an image. And I'm going to save that two ways. No, I don't have to save it two ways because it's black. I can use it pure black or any color. So I could take that and turn it into a grayscale. Um, 
mode. It's grayscale. That's a grayscale, even though it looks black. It should print in color now. So we will copy that grayscale and we'll paste it as a new brush. And I'm just going to call it Jen after my daughter. Jen Arch. Jennifer's Arch. Jen Arch. Okay. So now we got that paintbrush. And before I go deleting everything, I want to go back and check it again. Let me uh, go back to here and use just the plain bright bright brush again. Select um, none. I may use my. I'm going to try that tool and see what happens. Usually I, I, I use a brush, but I was going to try it with Gen Arch into the air. What if I take that and try it with a red? Will it work? There it is. So, yes, it will. So, yes, it will. And I actually probably could do a weird thing. Look at this. Let me undo that. I like to p play so much. My God. Okay. If I go back here and I do this right here, exactly on top. See if I can do that paintbrush exactly on top of this and see how close that brush comes out. I've got to move it now. I should have said. Well, that was no good. Okay, I want to do the paintbrush, but I want it to all be inside the window. Okay, here we go. It's close. Now, if I zoom up real close to it, I'm w I want to see if I can add a dimension to it, and I can. I can tell it already. I can do it. If I take that um, and offset that red a little bit, there's exactly where the other one is. Now, if I take the bottom one and I offset it, it'll look like a shadow in there. So I'll take and move the bottom one. Take and move it. That's kind of neat. And I probably could blur it even a hair if I wanted to. Oh, that looks pretty neat, though. Let me duplicate it and, and blur one and see what happens. Take that and put just a little bit of a blur to it. Oh, that's pretty nice, too. Okay, let's zoom back up into it, look at it close. Nice. Nice. If I take the blur one offset a little bit, maybe I can move it a bit more. I don't want it to look like a, it's totally separated. Just a little bit. That's okay. It's kind of a neat looking effect, isn't it? Okay, now what else? Oh my god, what am I going to do for an encore? Okay, we'll go back here and I'll do another brush because I wanted my brush and I've got my brush now. So now it's time to do another brush. We'll get rid of that layer all together. That drawing layer, not the one that you're looking at, the drawing layer that I made invisible. I'll just erase everything in it. I erase everything in it. And then I can go down to this layer and see if I can capture that blue design in it. So I go to this one, duplicate it, scoot it up a little bit. 
and we'll take it and turn it into a grayscale. Not 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 grayscale. We want to remove saturation. There's a difference between desaturating and grayscale. If it's grayscale, it will change every one of these images, every layer. And all we want to do is desaturate it. That's all. We want to desaturate one image out of it. And it's a little bit of a slow process to desaturate. Now we take that and use the curves on it. Make the black black. And the light white. If I make the white too light, say, if I make it too light, I'll get breaks like that in my black line. So I've got to be careful I don't get breaks in the black line. I want that black line to come out solid. So, so like this mark in here, I'll zoom up again and show here what I'm talking about. If this, uh, see, I want to be sure I can catch all that and have that be solid. I don't want to have white marks in there and everything. So I've got to, uh, I think I'll be okay if I take this now and I duplicate it. Now watch up close what happens when I duplicate it. And then I take this layer and I turn my white transparent. It just darkened that whole thing up a little bit more. Let's do another one. We'll even do another. Okay, merge down. Merge down. I can merge right down against that white. I don't care. Okay, now uh, zoom back out and see if I can get more contrast in it. Because again, all I'm wanting to do is capture that arch in there. That's what I'm wanting to do is capture the arch. Uh, first, let me separate uh, the text that I can get real easy out of it. None. I'll get rid of that. Then I'll copy that whole image. This layer right here, that's all we're looking at. That's the one I want to capture right there. So I say, okay, copy this, copy, edit, paste as a new image. And I didn't copy the right one. Well, I wanted to select everything, select all. select all and then I want to paste it as a new image paste as a new image what am I doing I see it right there Select all, cut it. Well, somebody probably watching there saw what I did, but I don't know what I did. But when I cut it, it worked. But when I thought I copied it, it didn't. And I don't really know why. Hmm. Again, to me, I guess I don't. All is well that ends well. That's what matters. Okay, let me take this and duplicate that layer. I'm going to take and see if I can clean that up a little more with the curves. I want to get that white out of there without...
Okay, let's see what happens there when I try to select that. I'm going to try to select just the white. Hard to tell. Hard to tell without painting it. So I'll put another layer and I'll paint and see what happens. But I'm going to use the brush on it because I, I don't want to paint that inside. I won't use the brush, I'll use a pencil. Pencil gives you a hard, hard line. Your brush does too, I guess. But I want that black, but it's okay. I'll just turn it black. I guess this will let me see if it's really the... Because if I can cover up all the black with the uh, red, I know I've got the whole thing. Looks like one little pixel I got in there. Let's see that. Okay, select none. Select none. Looks like I've got it. Looks like I've got it. Looks like it. Okay, I'm going to turn that into... Uh, let me select I'll paint it black. I'll paint it black. Now, instead of just changing the color, I'll paint it black. Select all. Invert. Invert. And I'll paint it black. I'll paint it black, and I'll have another paintbrush. And these will be used in the, the paintbrushes will be used in the future pictures. You'll see these things pop up, and I'll, I'll say, hey, go back and take a look how that paintbrush was made. Okay, so there it is. And select none. That looks good to me. I'm going to zoom up just to make sure. But it looks like a good brush. Because that zoomed up much bigger than I'll ever be using that brush. Okay, let me reduce this down. I'm still big. I'm giant. I reduced my other one, but I didn't reduce this one here. Image, scale image, and we'll take it down to uh, 720. And now we'll turn it into a paintbrush. I want to select, I'm going to paint it one more time because I, I changed the size. Select, invert, and I'll paint it again just to be sure. Whenever you change the size, you probably ought to repaint something and make sure you got all those loose pixels in there. I thought I even saw a couple of pixels in the middle of there. Let's take a look and see here. No, I got them all. It, that re that red reduction inside gun. There was a couple free pixels in there. Okay, now I can select all that. But well, first, let's turn it into a grayscale. Grayscale. Select it all. Copy it. paste as a new brush and we'll call that Jenny's Arch 2 and we'll give it a test over here okay let's try a paintbrush there's Gen Arch 2 you can also look at your paintbrushes over here it gives you a little bit better view of them all over here. The same as you can look at your fonts on this side. And it separates them all out much, much better. But there's this arch, and we'll make that into a 
what color is making it into a deep that deep color or not. Let's try it. The worst case is to change it, right? And there it is. Okay, that's fine. I put another poem in here, but, if, but my last poem lost me a couple of subscribers, I think. So I'm not the poet that I th thought I was. <laughs> but I will play with it some more just so that I can uh, keep my video rolling here you can take this let's go down to this image here and we'll put a space and we'll make an area that we could write in if we want to write in here I'll make two selections. That way I can put one in here too. And we've got that area to take and put a uh, a bit of a tint in there. And we'll take that and do the opacity so you can see through it, but it's still good to write on. And we can take this and see it's translucent. So I'm going to show you something that is semi-transparent. I'll show you something else. So if we take and we select all of this and invert it. And I want to put a black shadow, but watch what happens when I do black. It'll show right through and it look ugly. It darken it all up. However, did I paint on top of my transparent? Oh my god, I did it on top of my transparent. That's not good. Okay, let me go up here and invert that. Colors. Look what a cheap way to get out of what I just did wrong. And I'll double that layer, and I'll take this one, I'll invert it. And they cancel each other out. One's light, one's dark, and they both have the opacity set. So I can take this one, I take the bottom dark, and watch here. I can offset it. Make that to the image size. And that actually gives a almost a 3D looking box effect in there. And these two can belong together like that or, or you can actually select this area here and that area there and delete it from here. And then you'll lose the white shadow, and you'll only have a dark shadow on one side. See the difference? So it's kind of a matter of how you would want it to be, whether you like it like that, or you like it like that. All a matter of taste. And if I merge it down, I can even make it to where I can move both of them over a little bit because I got real close there when I added the border. I, uh, the, the, the centering changed on it so I can move over everything, move it back over right. Okay. I think I'll make some... Uh, vine and flower looking uh see what can I do there? This all looks pretty good. I'm thinking what more I could do to the draw to the image. 
as long as that background's not in there, I can actually take all these and make them into one new from visible. That means I can turn all these off and I can take and slide that image over then. So I can take this and go cut it. Cut. Edit. Paste in place. And move it over a little bit then. So there, just move it over a little so that balances that side there. I want that same distance here as there. I didn't want that too close. Okay, so select none. I want to turn this into a layer first. Okay, to a new layer. The layer to the image size. And there the whole thing is. Then I go down here and I can go, uh, let's see, something like this make another layer in there on top and would be a good color oh my god would be a good color probably the yellow would be now it will remember some of the colors of you see that yellow I picked out it remembered it same as this one here it remembered that's that inside and there's another color that was picked at another time it remembers like the last half dozen colors you pick and here we see that that uh, I don't know what color that be somebody tell me what color that reddish looking thing is that right there I guess that's a uh, I don't know if that would be called an, uh, an orchid looking thing or what anyway we're gonna pick this color here but you see where it stores the colors in here anyway and we'll paint that we'll select it shrink it and I like my Oh, there's a 16. And I'm going to take, I want to do something different here. I've got that color. I want to see what happens when I take that color and invert it. What does an inverted yellow look like? So there's the colors. Let's invert one. Okay, there it is inverted. So I can use that inverted and then take the bottom one and move it. Maybe I should move the top one. Put that. Yeah, that's the one it should be moved. The yellow should be the one standing out and the uh, dark one be moved down a little bit because then it would look, it has that shadow effect to it. And here I'm hitting my down key my arrow key to go down that's how I'm moving that uh, layer to image size and let's put a little bit of a shadow to it we'll make it not a shadow but we'll make it a little bit faint and when we can take this top one and I don't think there's anything in this layer no there's not that's a free layer to use we'll take this layer choose it which is that line on this one here will invert select invert so look clear from that border all out everything in there transparent and we'll take that and let's paint it um, black then we'll select it and shrink it and this will give a very It'll give an outside border too to everything. See that outside edge? It'll slip in too. It'll shrink in by two. Shrink by two and delete it and select none. And there you've got a little thin outline on all that. And the very outside of the complete image has a little black border. That actually probably could have, that probably could have done a couple on that instead of just one pixel. And this is my thumbnail. So I've got to do my, I've got to do my thumbnail ready. What's my thumbnail ready? Okay. Let me pick my font. Font.
What's some of my bold one? There's a bold deja vu boom. Uh, let me see if I have anything that looks real. Oh, there you go. What's that? Look at that. I don't think I've ever used it. Oliver's Barney. Okay. Um, well, I suppose actually I should put that up on top. So. It okay. Gimp tutorial. And what did we do here? Cleaning images, because we cleaned the image and got the brush out of it. Clean images, make brushes. Clean images, make brushes, and what else did we do? We cleaned the images, made the brushes, and uh, shadow effects. We almost always do shadow effects. And shadow effects. And because those are fat, I think I'm going to double space them in between them. That looks nice. Better double space. And control A, select them all, and let's boost the size of them. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Now we can move them where we want them. We'll move them down a little bit out of that design. Oh, I could put them in there, couldn't I? I could put them in there. Okay. So how am I going to do this? Okay, here. this yeah so okay let's see if I can resize them oh first we'll turn it into a layer to a new layer okay move that down and then take that and merge it down and then that'll let me fool that as a as a uh, crimping that's okay yeah that's okay it's a little crimped in there but I, uh, I can get by with that we can live with that can't we okay scale it and then move it down Now I've got all these layers in there. Could I do something really weird with it? And uh, let's see, first of all, there's my text. We'll make that into a, uh, a layer to image size. Maybe I can capture, you see that layer? I'm gonna see if I can capture that center part and make it bigger. Look at here. We're on that layer. Be sure, yep, there's the layer. Here's this. I'm going to go in there. Cut that out. Cut. Now I'm going to paste it in place. I'm going to... Uh, to a new layer and see if I can't squat it down. That's a resize. I'll move it down there a little bit. I'll move it up there a little bit. 
Move it over there a little bit. Move it over there a little bit. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at that. And now I can take that layer and slide it down. What do you think of that, you guys? Huh? You like that? And I guess since I moved that one down, uh, can we take that and turn it into a the image size? I guess since we moved that one, we could move the other one too. Since that's inside the border, I don't want that dangling outside the border. So let's see if I can get that one out too. Oh, I gotta be careful. That's awfully close to that edge there. Okay, I think I got it, had it cut, oh I can't cut that, I've got to cut the layer I'm working on, don't I, cut, select, none, edit, paste in place, now we'll turn that into a new layer, to a new layer, and we'll shrink it. And that way we can make it look like it belonged with the one next to it, okay? Or I could slide it up too. What if I do this? Scale. It's not bad. make a new layer from the visible up on top make another layer on top of that okay and here take all that here take it all and we'll center it there look at that look at that everything worked out fine that wasn't even planned that shows how things can happen when you don't even know what you're going to do for sure and I guess I can elongate that even a little bit more I can stretch them out click it look at look here oh my god somebody looks at this thumbnail and says Man, I have to go check that out. What's this guy doing over here? Okay. I think we've got a picture. I think we've got it. There's a video, and here's the stuff.